So in this video, we're going to talk about the Schrodinger equation. And all the Schrodinger equation is, is just the wave equation for matter waves, or looking at matter as waves in quantum mechanics. So it's, it's the main tool we use in quantum mechanics to, to, to analyze systems. So first I'll just write it down, and then we'll talk about the different pieces. So here we have I times H bar. And then I'll do the time derivative with respect to t times let's see, the wave function, which I'm using a different symbol for wave function in this in this in this case equals. h bar squared or 2m times the wave whoop, not times the wave function I'm getting ahead of myself times the second derivative with respect to x of the wave function again plus so I'll use this plus this the, the potential energy of the term as a function of x, because maybe that changes as a function of x, times the wave function. So this here is the Schrodinger equation. So, so where do we start talking about this? Well, the first thing I want to point out is that, just like our other wave equation, it, it consists of derivatives derivatives and this is just a constant term but but it's it's not a derivative but it serves sort of the same purpose I'm still keeping it the same color and these these are what are modifying the wave function in in our and and then we're equating equating these different terms or these two terms added together equal this term and so the fact that we're using a, a multiple multiplicative term and then two derivatives means that the wave functions are allowed to to interfere that we can that we can add different wave functions together to get a total wave function and that's and that's what makes this a wave equation and that's that's why the other wave equation worked the way it did and and that's why this this equation works the way it does it's so I'm just I'm just convincing you that this is indeed a wave equation and the next thing I'll address are these are these constant terms here these 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 constants here and what do these mean well for now we'll just think of them as constants and 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 h bar is a, is a very important constant in quantum mechanics and it's really the fact that h bar exists is is kind of part of the whole basis of quantum mechanics but um but we'll leave that for for future videos and for now they're just they're just constants and the the last thing to address at least in the way we've written it here are these are the are these wave functions or or the wave function and so i've used this different symbol right i've used the greek letter psi psi and it's it's just another way to label the wave function But in this in this video, I've chosen to use psi for the wave function because because that's that's the normal normal symbol used in quantum mechanics just to get used to seeing a psi if you're going to be learning about quantum mechanics. And then also to emphasize the fact that that we're talking about something different. We're not talking about how far a string has moved. We're not talking about about the electric field in a in a in an electromagnetic wave, we're not talking about pressure in a sound wave. We're talking about a matter wave. And what what is this? What does this mean? This this wave function here, right? What what is this? If I say at a certain value of x, we have we psi has a value, and what does that value of psi really mean? 
Well, it's what it is is the probability amplitude. I'm gonna write that down. Probability amplitude. Probability amplitude. Amplitude. And what does that mean? Well, say I have <coughs> excuse me. Say I have a wave function. And say say I have a particle in a box, and we'll solve this probably in the next video. We'll we'll show what it's like. But say I have this is my wave function. I'll use I'll use purple or this pinkish color to to stay consistent. And and say this is my this is my wave function. What does this mean? Well, the interpretation of a value of psi. The probability amplitude is basically how likely the particle is to be at a certain point in here. And to actually find the probability, it's it's the square, the square of psi. Square. And I'm using these these bars here to 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 emphasize the fact that that psi can be a complex number. It can have a complex value. And so, and so we need to take the the, mo the square modulus, mo multiply it by its complex conjugate, and that's that's what squaring is. But but I just I just wanted to be clear about that fact, and that's why I'm writing it like this. But but we won't deal with that right now. But um, but anyway, I just wanted to to clarify that this psi isn't the probability; it's just the probability amplitude. Because because you could say I have another you know, I'm going to draw this box again, and say, say I have a wave function, you know, that, like the other case where, you know, the other standing wave case where I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's actually negative here. There's not negative probability, and you can, so if you square it, you ensure that, that it's always a positive probability. But that's basically what we're, all we're talking about with psi is, how probable is it that the particle is in any particular position when we talk about psi of x. When we talk about the wave function with with as a function of x. And so to set us up to do a problem with the Schrodinger equation, I I want to to make make one simplification. So we have this up here, we have we have this right hand side. I'm not going to touch this right hand side the left hand side with the time derivative I'm going to I'm going to get rid of this time derivative and assume we're only talking about states that are that are they're called stationary states and and that and I won't go into that description and that's I have to stop myself from using certain terminology but, but basically this I'll write this in red is called the time dependent Schrodinger equation. And, and it looks like I'm pointing pointing at that at this at this potential energy function, but that's that's not what I'm doing. So I'll cross this out and that's not what I'm doing. But this whole thing is called the time dependent Schrodinger equation. If we make a simplification, we can we can get to and I'm not going to go into the details of that simplification for right now. But we can get the time independent Schrodinger equation, and and all that is is instead of instead of this time derivative here, we're just going to to have a constant there, and it's going to be the energy the energy of of the particle times the wave function equals h bar squared over 2m the negative sign times the second derivative with respect to x of the Schrodinger or not of the Schrodinger equation of the wave function plus this potential energy term shift over a bit potential energy term 
times the wave function. And this is the equation that we'll be solving in the next video for a certain for a certain type of a certain a certain situation. And and in this video, I'll leave you with two two little bits to chew on. And the first little bit to chew on is that this 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 piece here is the potential energy. Or, or not, not this. Just this part is the potential energy, potential energy of the of the of the particle, and times its wave function. So what is this here? Well, this is the total energy, right? This is the total energy, total energy. So it sure makes sense if this was the kinetic energy. kinetic energy and and that's true that's what this is and and I won't explain how that is but I I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that this is this is just an equation about energy and for some reason there's this second derivative of the of the of the wave function the curvature of the wave function has to do with its kinetic energy but anyway I'll leave you to chew on that and at some point when I finally get to to do these full quantum mechanics playlists I'll, I'll we'll we'll talk a lot about that and the other the other bit to chew on which is actually a much bigger bit to chew on is this right here why in the world is this a one dimensional or why or or why is this only a single derivative wouldn't it make sense if like the other wave equation we had that it was also a second derivative and 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 why is it like this and 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 that's that's a that's a really good question and and I'll give you a I'll sort of give you the answer just so you don't think too hard about it the Schrodinger equation is only true in in non-relativistic cases and this is going way beyond the scope of this video or any playlist I'll likely make in the next very long time but 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 if we if we somehow find a way to 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 make this a second derivative we end up with something called the Dirac equation and that describes that describes relativistic quantum mechanics and it also it also it it actually predicts the existence of spin which also I haven't talked about but you you may have heard about it if you're watching it if you're watching a uh, a video about quantum mechanics you've probably heard of spin and it actually predicts spin instead of spin just being some extra thing as it is if we talk about just the Schrodinger equation but but it actually predicts spin so 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 those are just two things to think about that I'm not going to talk about and well but just to summarize this video before we go this is the Schrodinger equation that the time dependent Schrodinger equation and and the and the probability amplitude is 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 what is that's the unit of this of this uh, of this wave function for matter waves it's the the oh, not not the probability but the, the square of the wave function is the probability of it being at, at a specific point x. And then we made a simplification that we didn't discuss the details of and got to this this time independent Schrodinger equation, which is very useful and we'll use it in the next video.